Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante, and welcome back to the Spider-Verse. Someday I'll be able to pronounce Spider-Verse, Spider-Verse. Anyway, so this is the stage of the 3D scene now. I did quite a few changes in between the episodes. I probably even won't be able to remember everything I changed. But the main thing is probably the fact that Peter Parker is now trying to stop the minibus using his famous trick from Spider-Man 2. And that will be connected to this third chef right here that is tripping on the floor, he probably tripped on one of the webs, so we'll paint that just right so it would read that he tripped on it. What else? Green things are another normal size cars uh, in the back. I decided to have just two yellow minibuses because the whole picture was just a trail of yellow buses and I think it was blending together poorly. So this rare bus now has a distance from the main one so they don't blend together and they have like a really cool angle tilting because SP slash DR jumped on it, so it's kind of like tilting towards the camera. And another pretty big change are these purple things, the poles. Let me explain to you what this is. It's this. Two big poles right here. There are the street lights. And in between them we have, I think this is still going on, like these USSR style Christmas lights. So we'll have these hanging around. This is literally the main street. It says right here, it's Krishatik. And yeah, this is the view I got from Google Maps that I think is almost where we need it to be, our scene. Except we're gonna be on the sidewalk area and it's gonna be a bit smaller. Smaller, but whatever. So yeah, from here I will add definitely this statue right here. This is a really famous distinguishable part of the main street. Then the blue phone over here will be the same thing. Couple of flags in the shot will also add those. And finally the poles with the Christmas lights. So that's what we're adding to the shot definitely. So in here we can see there's the flag. Here's the blue phone and two rows of these poles with Christmas lights that will be lighting up the whole sky with a purple and blue air perspective the way they have in the trailers. Like the whole city of New York is always glowing with all kinds of lights everywhere. So we'll be able to do the same thing here and it will be really convenient because these two, Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen, they'll both have a really good distinguishable silhouettes because they're black on black sky, but there will be a really strong air perspective from the Christmas lights and that's gonna look pretty awesomely. Yeah, so also I moved the camera a little bit. I moved it away. This is the old position, this is the new one. And the new one has a bit of a less field of view, so we get slightly less of the perspective distortion in the shot. So all the characters will have scale a bit closer to each other, which is great, especially for the Penny Parker right there. So there's that. Uh, and finally, the last detail that you see here are these pieces of paper flying around everywhere, because I thought we really missed some details in this area. It was pretty empty. So this was a good place to put these. And these will be probably the posters announcing that the new movie is gonna be out soon. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Or maybe something about the comic on Ukraine, maybe. But probably the movie is a better choice. So yeah, in here you can see in the back I have that photo place right here. So this is pretty much how it's gonna be. Maybe uh, to the left a little bit. Like, it's not gonna be in the sketch. I just put it in here. I think it's gonna look pretty well, but nighttime, obviously. And yeah, one more detail that I haven't mentioned yet is this passenger right here. And guess who that is? It's gonna be Stan Lee. So I think the improvements are pretty awesome and I'm super hyped to start painting this. So let's go ahead and do just that. Right now what I'll do is I'm gonna export this view but with a perfectly white background. So we have like a sketch rendering like this. It's all great, but the problem with Blender is that I can't render the scene to look like this with these specific grids and everything. It looks just right as a sketch, but you can't actually render this out of Blender. It can only render with cool lighting with the cycles render or have uh, some kind of rendering like this, the shader rendering of Eevee, which is great and all, but we need actual lines of the polygons 
and this is the only view you get, you can't really render it in high resolution. So what I decided to do to avoid any kind of headache is I just zoom in a little bit, move the camera around, make screenshots and paste them in Photoshop and then just stitch everything together. Uh, probably at this scale, like this way we get all the details we need and the thickness of the lines is just right, I think. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do and in a moment we'll be on iPad. All right, here we are. So this is the previous version of the sketch that I already put in our Studio Pro. So let's replace it like this. Boom. Oh yeah, the new version has a much more satisfying spread of details, much more alive, and the characters on top of the minibus are much bigger now, which is very good. I felt like they're really just spread very weirdly in this area, and then there's just a huge blank place right here. Pretty much solved it in this scenario. Yeah, this was me just uh, giving it a try, painting underneath the three-dimensional sketch. It was going well, but obviously I didn't go far. But now let's just start painting, because we have little time to mess around. So I'll start with just painting basic colors of everything, just filling up different areas. I'll start with just this uh, dark purple sky. Let's just fill up the whole image with this. And from this point, let's just search what the colors of the objects would be in the gamma of this uh, purple night city environment. Alright, so search in progress, looking for a good exposure and how to visualize all the colors, all the surfaces in the pretty rich and complex gamma that we have here. Like in this area, there's the gamma of the reflected lights of the car right here. And in here, there's a complex lighting going from these, there will be like stores in here with bright stuff going on. Uh, bright yellow and then bright cyan, so it's gonna look pretty cool. And yeah, just seeing what else I can do on layering the rendering passes over and over again. Right now I actually had an idea it would be cool to use a separate layer for the characters, like pretty much all of the characters would be in a separate layer. That would help me a lot definitely with rendering this asphalt right here and this one as well, like all of this, because right now this is a pretty complex shading going on in here and I have to jump around the characters and that's a pain. So yeah, I'll segregate the characters, I'll repaint their color blocks the way I have them right now in a separate layer, and this one as well and everything. And it will be much easier to just shade the flat surfaces of the surrounding. So that's the plan, let's keep going.
Okay, so this is what we have for this episode, I think. I segregated even another layer with the whole background, as you may have noticed. Pretty much the rule of thumb, what to segregate is where you have a bunch of important details, like a bunch of characters that are not really overlapping each other. It would be cool to just combine all of them into one layer and just work with them separately. And another rule is wherever you have a lot of flat or smooth surfaces that require applying big and soft gradients to them, that will be a huge pain to paint all in one layer. Like for instance this uh, front plane of the bus, it's really cool that I have it behind Peter Parker, so it's much easier to render that. Same as this asphalt area over here, and of course this whole sky stuff is so much easier to render when it's in a separate layer. So these are the things that I separated. The most massive layer is this one with pieces of old characters in it yet but as you can see like characters are not in here none of them like literally even noir spider-man I can erase it boom this way it felt much easier to work with this whole thing introducing these soft lighting gradients everywhere was much more pleasant now so yeah this is the general feel of the whole scene more or less we'll add the web from peter parker going on everywhere and a bunch of other details there's our independency monument to tell the viewer where the whole thing is going on and yeah in the next episode we'll start rendering everything and generally i want to think of bit more on the contrast, the proper values, the compositional values. Is everything standing out properly when it should? I think I'll add like a soft gradient behind the spider ham right here to highlight its silhouette a bit better. Something like this, you know, just some extra air perspective behind him. That'll work pretty well, I think. And yeah, aside from that, we'll just keep going. I'll make sure I find a reference for our Christmas lights when they're at night and actually glowing to see where to go from there. I mean, I kind of get the idea in here how it goes, right? It's just in these patterns of leaves and whatnot. Should be just glowing, but the colors I'm not sure about. So yeah, this is it for today. Tell me guys what you think. Again, in retrospective, because this whole thing will be very different by the time you see the video. But yeah, I think we're going pretty well. If we keep this up, it's gonna be really awesome. We'll pay a lot of attention to the design of all the characters in the next episode of course because right now there some of them especially the spider ham it really requires a very dynamic and specific looney tuney style so the shape of its body is not gonna be this kind of shape probably we're gonna change quite a few things and the chefs we're gonna think on them right now they don't really have any character in them which is not exactly good yet so yeah and making sure that all the heroes poses especially the ones that are on the top on the minibus they should have really strong easily readable dynamic action poses that should look like an actual very high level cartoon kind of dynamics so we're gonna be searching that I think is gonna be really interesting but yeah for now we'll just figure out the main colors we pretty much almost did everything we needed to do also there's another layer with the glowing lights of the minibus and yeah we'll be using that layer for all kinds of glowings in in the future and i thank you for watching if you did i guess it did if you're here low like and subscribe tell a friend do your best do whatever you want and i will see you in the next one bye This is such an exciting phase of the painting, like when you actually see where you're getting at with the actual final look. It kind of gets brought to life already, which is quite fun, exciting.